Hi, and welcome to the Electronics and Programming Beginner's Guide. Today we're going to start a new um, video series, and I'm going to refer to this video series as uh, Back to Basics. The idea of this video series is going to be that we're going to start at a very basic topic, and we're going to slowly chip away at it and work our way up to um, you know the pinnacle of knowing the subject. Uh, most likely, uh, there will be a, a bunch of, well, that'll be consecutive videos where uh, I will discuss uh, different topics and then we'll build all those topics up separately until we get to, you know, something uh, more cohesive at the very end. Uh, please let me know if you like the idea or uh, if there are any topics that you want me to discuss. So let's get started. Today's Back to Basics is going to be uh, discussing capacitors. We're going to start chipping away at the uh, very basics of what a capacitor is. And what is a capacitor? A capacitor is two conductive plates sitting next to each other. And that's really it. And that's what I've drawn here. It's kind of in perspective where you have, you know, the uh, from your view, I guess it would be the right plate and then the left plate and they are sitting next to each other. What does a capacitor do? A capacitor stores charge. You know, it stores electrons. So if you were to take this uh, parallel plate capacitor, that's uh, uh, usually what they call it, and you uh, hook it up to a battery, like that, what you get is the uh, battery will uh, pull electrons off of one side and uh, deposit them onto the other side. Uh, batteries like this are usually positive, negative. And so uh, what you get is uh, electrons will leave uh, this plate and work their way into the battery and then they will uh, exit the battery on this side and deposit them over here. So what you get is a transfer of charge from one plate to the other plate. And that's really it for what a capacitor is and how it works. Uh, where things get a little more nitty gritty is when you actually talk about how capacitance is calculated and those kinds of things. What I have here is a formula which describes how the capacitance of a capacitor is calculated. The capacitance describes how much charge a capacitor can hold, um, uh, depending on voltage, obviously. It's proportional to voltage, and that's something we'll discuss in a later video. But for now, uh, capacitance is how much charge a capacitor can hold. Uh, the formula is C for capacitance, which capacitance is generally measured in uh, farads, but uh, very small farads like microfarads, uh, millifarads, uh, nanofarads, that kind of thing. Because capacitance is generally found in very small quantities compared to other things like resistance, for example, you know, which could be you know the ten thousand ohms, you know, hundred thousand, million ohms, etc. But anyway, the capacitance equals uh, the permeativity of free space, which is the, the epsilon naught, K is the relative permeativity, uh, A is the area of the plates, and D is the distance between the plates. The permeativity and relative permeativity, we'll get back to that in just a second because these are nice and confusing, but the two things that you should know by now, at least if you're watching this video, is area and distance. The area is the area of the plate. This uh, fairly simple formula tells us a few things off the bat. If you make the area larger, you get more capacitance and it's a direct relationship because the, the area is in the numerator of this fraction. The more area you get, you increase the capacitance the same proportion. If the area gets twice as big, the capacitance gets twice as big. If the area gets half as much, the capacitance gets half as much. It's very simple that way. The other simple thing that we can see from this formula is D, and that's the distance. That is the distance 
you know, between the two plates, how close the plates are together. And what you see from this formula is that uh, the capacitance is inversely proportional to the distance, meaning the smaller the distance, the greater the capacitance. So if you have a distance and you have it, uh, the capacitance goes up twice as much. It's, again, really that simple. Now to the confusing part. The confusing part are the permittivity and the relative permittivity. What the hell are these? These are, describe the material that is between uh, the two plates. If we say we go with a classic capacitor and that is a free air capacitor, uh, permittivity, this is a constant. This is the uh, epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space or a vacuum. Uh, K is the relative permittivity and that is the uh, relative permittivity of the uh, substance, you know, the dielectric as it's generally referred to that's sitting between the plates. So uh, if this formula was used in a vacuum, K equals to 1, and so K effectively disappears, and so the dielectric that is between the plates is just epsilon naught. When you start adding things uh, between the plates, uh, for instance, air, air is actually very, very close to a vacuum because air is actually kind of nothingness. You know, you, know, you really got to think about that one. But uh, the K here only rises by a tiny, tiny amount, so we can approximate uh, a free air capacitor with just epsilon naught. Where uh, capacitor manufacturers are always trying to improve is this K. Supercapacitors, for example, have a very high K compared to you know, a free air capacitor, and that's where they get uh, their gains in the capacitance because effectively what you find is there's a limit to how much A and how much D you can have. A is the really obvious one. You can't have plates that have areas of square miles. You know, you're just not going to be able to pack that kind of material uh, into a reasonable capacitor. Uh, same thing with D, there's a limit to how close you can get the plates together and that limit usually refers to uh, either the dielectric um, uh, that's uh, between the plates because what you'll get is if you get the plates too close together you can have an arc uh, that jumps across it or uh, what you run into is just uh, manufacturing issues because uh, making something that thin is uh, problematic. Well, but regardless, something to note about this formula, and that is note what's not in this formula, and that is the material of, that the plates is, uh, are made out of. Effectively, anything conductive can be turned into a capacitor. It's really that simple. The only difference uh, between capacitors as far as the material that's used for the plates is usually for manufacturing techniques because there's lots and lots and lots of different ways to make a capacitor and uh, some materials are uh, more convenient to use in some situations versus others. So something to remember that Again, the capacitance really depends on the dielectric material that's in between the two plates, the epsilon naught uh, relative and the K, and then the area and the distance between. Now when discussing capacitors, it's very easy to go down the rabbit hole of the different constructions and whatnot. Uh, the things that you need to understand is that as far as a parallel plate capacitor goes, uh, there are only few instances where a formula, uh, like I showed here, really matters. Uh, for instance, uh, IC designers. When you're talking about a chip and you have a square uh, metalized layers that are sitting on top of each other, you can create capacitors in the silicon or just above the silicon, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, 
uh, a formula like this you know really matters because in an ic because it's so small even tiny 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 uh, femtofarad capacitances can matter uh, the other place where a formula like this matters is if you're actually making a capacitor. If you're one of the manufacturers who makes a capacitor, it's fairly simple like that. Uh, another place where uh, something like this matters would be when you get into the radio stuff. Because when you get up into the radio frequencies, uh, capacitors uh, appear out of nowhere, so to speak, and they matter a lot more. And when designing circuit boards etc it may actually be beneficial to create capacitors by running traces and different orientations etc but for everybody else which is most likely you uh, the formula for parallel plate capacitor is entirely irrelevant where you do actually find relevance are in these four parameters there are obviously more than this but I kind of narrowed down uh, the four parameters that matter to you whenever you're designing something. And it is the capacitance, the voltage, the polarity, and the ESR, which stands for, uh, which stands for effective series resistance. So the capacitance. The capacitance is the easy one. The larger the capacitance, the more charge a capacitor stores. The smaller the capacitance, the less charge the capacitor stores. Uh, there are uh, specific reasons for why you would use a bigger capacitance here and a smaller capacitance there and that is something that will be discussed in later back to basic videos. The voltage. The voltage is fairly simple. A capacitor will be given a voltage rating. So if you have a capacitor, let's say the capacitor is 10 volts. What the voltage rating says is as long as the capacitor is operated with a voltage across it, that is, of 10 volts or less, everything will be happy and healthy. When you exceed the rated voltage of a capacitor, you uh, can run the risk of punching a hole through the dielectric that is between the plates and you get a little arc. Depending on the manufacturing process of the capacitor, and there are lots and lots of them, there are ceramic capacitors, aluminum electrolytics, polymer electrolytics, uh, film capacitors, uh, ceramic capacitors, just to name a few. There are more. Um, tantalum capacitors, that's the one that I wanted to mention. Uh, sometimes uh, that punch through effect is as simple as the capacitor now appears like a short because you uh, compromise the dielectric and other times you get a big display where the capacitor actually explodes depending on the severity of the punch through so something to know and understand is that you generally as a rule of thumb want about 50 percent or more overhead on the capacitor so if you have a 10 volt system don't use a 10 volt capacitor use a 15 or 20 volt capacitor that's where you that's where you'll get the safety margin for uh, the punch through not to happen the polarity again this comes from uh, the construction method of a capacitor this simple parallel plate capacitor that we drew here has no polarity it does not matter whether the charge is deposited on one plate or the other plate the capacitor will function equally well in the case of some capacitors like tantalums or uh, aluminum electrolytics, uh, it does matter uh, uh, which way the polarity goes. The reason for this is, again, the construction method, because uh, uh, by applying things inside the capacitor, uh, 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 anodizing, that's the word I was looking for, by applying, let's say, an aluminum capacitor anodizing to one side of the plate, which is aluminum, uh, you can create a much better uh, both uh, uh, dielectric effect against the punch through and uh, the uh, relative permeativity of the material, etc., to make a much better capacitor going in one direction. But in the other direction, it's actually a very poor capacitor. And that's where the polarity comes from. Just be aware that some capacitors are polarized and other ones are not. We'll have a, a a more detailed discussion on this as far as what the different constructions are and the advantages and disadvantages of them etc
the final thing to be aware of is the ESR, which is the effective series resistance. Uh, we will uh, eventually discuss a complete model of what a capacitor looks like. I'm thinking maybe in the next video, but we'll see what happens. What the ESR is, is a capacitor, even though we drew it like this and we calculated the formula, etc., a capacitor is not perfect. A capacitor will have some resistance in it, and the amount of that resistance is important uh, for the different kinds of applications that uh, you're going to use the capacitor for. As far as capacitors go, that's really about it. In a parallel plate capacitor, the area is important, the distance between the plates is important, and the dielectric uh, constants for the material between the plates are important. That's it. Capacitors do become a much more complicated subject, but we want to break it down into smaller bite-sized pieces, and I think this is going to be the end of the bite-sized piece for today. Um, if you have questions, you're always welcome to leave them down below. Uh, if you're uh, curious, you can always uh, uh, look think, uh, these things up on Google. I encourage that because uh, maybe I've uh, explained something one way and it doesn't quite make sense to you and a different explanation might help. Um, thank you for watching. Um, please also let me know uh, if you like this back to basics kind of video series and said I will try to cover a broad range of topics and uh, we'll see what happens from here.